All right, guys, and welcome back. Looking at the shrine again, we can see we have a really good looking shrine this week. We're looking at Bond, which is a perk unlocked on Dwight at level 30. We have Decisive Strike, which is a Laurie Strode perk unlocked at level 35. We have Overwhelming Presence, which is a level 30 perk unlocked from the Doctor. And ladies and gentlemen, the best perk of them all, we have Pop Goes the Weasel unlocked at level 35 on the Clown as well. 35 or 40. I think it's 35. All right, let's get into this. Now, what is Bond? Bond will allow you to see your allies within 36 meters at tier three when you are playing a survivor. So if you are walking down the middle of the street, you might see Jeff on a generator to the right. You might see Claudette self-caring to your left. It gives you knowledge. Now, this is a good and a bad thing. This can be used aggressively or passively. Now, what am I referring to? Let's talk about being passive first. Bond can be good if you see a survivor, you hear a harpy, you see him running, vaults a window, fast pulls a pallet. You know the killer's most likely in that general direction, allowing you to cycle to the left and disappear, get to objective, get to work done. You can play it good. If a killer hits you and you lose him, you can see a survivor, you can run straight to your survivor and get healed. Getting healed by an ally is going to take 16 seconds, as opposed to self-caring is going to take 32 seconds without a medkit. Alright, big difference in time save there. Bond is a good perk, okay? It is like aftercare, but permanent, but of smaller range. Aftercare is great if you don't get caught. Generally, a killer will find you and eventually tunnel you down due to the fact they want their barbecue stack. Most cases, uh, it just comes down to how good you are with looping and losing them to um, prevent the barbecue stack. What I can say about Bond as well, is when I use Bond, I tend to use it a bit more aggressively. Now you might be wondering what I mean when I say an aggressive Bond kind of playstyle. I'm referring to, the, I find the killer, or the killer finds me, I'm doing a generator in the middle of the map, in the middle of the street. I start running down the street, let's just talk about the preschool map, yeah, I'm running down the preschool map, yep, yeah, down the center, and then the killer's chasing behind me. I see to my right hand side, I can't hear it, I see that underneath, not the school area, to the right-hand side, that I have two teammates working on a generator. The dumbest thing I could do is take the killer to the teammates, right? I go to the left-hand side rather than the right. Killer's visually seen me, so he's going to follow me. I'm now running the killer away from where two teammates are currently doing objective. Therefore, I know stuff is actually happening. Very, very powerful if you mislead the killer. For example, if I see two... Let's just talk about one person starting off. I see one person on a generator... I know he just got to the generator, or even if I don't know, he's on the jenny, I'm running, four jennies are completed, and the killer's chasing me. I know he doesn't have ruin, it's going to take my teammate 80 seconds to do that generator if he can't land a great skill check to save his life. 80 seconds with no enhancements. Now I go, how can I loop this killer for an additional 80 seconds to get adrenaline to pop? Do I have these pallets left? Do I have this pallet left? Can I take him here? I know this guy's doing objective. I'm running down further to the right-hand side. I see other teammates over here not doing objectives. I might run him past my teammates. Might be a bit of a, you know, an asshole thing to do. It just depends on what is left on the map. I know Jeff is doing a generator all the way in the corner of the map. And it's going to be done soon. If I can hold the killer, maybe take a hit. Dead hard, count the timer down. Just use it in your head. Go, okay, it's been about 55 seconds. Jeff should be done in about 25 seconds now. I'm going to medium vault the window. I'm going to run around the pallet twice. Get a dead hard the pallet. Pull the pallet down. I'm going to rotate. See if he tries to bloodlust. Go over to the shack. And then I'm going to go for the exit game. Just knowing your pathing. Bond can be very good if you use it aggressively. The people that use it passively, which is what most people do when they run it, they're not getting their full potential out of it. Keep in mind... The best way to beat a killer is sometimes, it's just like playing Trapper. To catch people, you need to look dumb. So if you prep around a loop and a guy pulls the pallet down, you run the opposite direction as if you're trying to bloodlust him. He's generally going to run the, around the opposite way, stepping in your bear trap. Sometimes playing dumb is the smartest thing. So if I'm in the middle of the street and the killer sees me, and I know it's 110 movement speed Huntress, you know, and I know if she's going to pull up without the babushka add on at 2.2 seconds, and I've got a signpost to my left that I can block her line of sight with, just knowing these kind of things to force the killer in the direction I want. If you watch my content, you will notice a lot of the time that when I'm running and I'm too far ahead of the killer, I will stand still for a second and then I'll run again. I do that because I want the killer to just see me when I go around a lot of the corners. So the killer's at the furthest point away, but still where I know where he is. So he can't hide his light, he can't try any of that shit, and I still know where he is. Very rarely will I want the lead in front of him. If I want the lead in front of him, it's because I'm going to try and lose him. I'm going to try and pull a Swifty around a corner. I'm going to do something really shady to just disappear from the killer. Yeah, it can be very good. For example, on one of the jungle gyms, you vault the window, you leave scratches to the right, and then you walk and you've got a little wall you can hide behind. Killer comes running right past, and then they see your scratches go, then you medium vault the window again, or slow vault the window, or you even bang off to the side, depending on what direction the killer goes, you know? The killer might hide his light, and if the killer hides his light, you can just walk right past him. Don't sprint. If you walk, you're a lot quieter, or even stand stationary. He might go right past you, lunge at the pallet, and then you dip in the opposite direction. It might sound like a far-fetched sketch, but we do do it quite often. Even at rank 1, chat, it just comes down to who understands the jungle gym better, you or the killer?
Let's move on to our next perk chat. This is Decisive Strike. Old school Decisive Strike was a real pain in the ass. You had to wiggle to 35% and then you got an instant free off the killer's shoulder. Or if you were the obsession, you got a free off the shoulder anyways. You just had to land a small skill check. This DS is a lot better. If you are unhooked and the killer hits you and picks you up, you get to DS him. So once you're unhooked by a teammate or you Kobe off the hook, for the next 40, 50, and 60 seconds, depending on whether it's tier 1, tier 2, or tier 3, if you are downed and picked up by the killer, you can DS him and then run away while he's stunned for 5 seconds. PS, the new Enduring that is currently in the PTB reduces stuns by 50%, not 75, and does not affect DS. So expect to see a lot more Decisive Strike coming. So this is just going to punish you for tunneling somebody down. Now, a really powerful DS build, there are a few. You could run it with Metal of Man, it just depends on your playstyle. I like to run this. Adrenaline, Dead Hard, Decisive Strike, and Deliverance. Now, I know what you're thinking. Deliverance and Adrenaline kind of counter in two. You're absolutely right. You could get rid of Adrenaline and you could run... Um, you could run something like Medal of Man. It just depends on your playstyle. That means, you know, you're going to take one hit, you're going to take two hits, now you're in dying state, then, you know, the killer comes at you, picks you up, you get off the hook, you know, you've been hit three times, you're in dying state, you DS the killer, then he hits you again, then you Medal of Man, then he has to hit you again to down you. Like, doing the math, it could be really painful, even without an instant heal. Very hard to verse. So DS is good if you think your teammates don't have borrowed time. If you're running into hook save somebody and you know the killer's around, you better hope you have borrowed time or you're going to have a really upset survivor in your hands. So when your teammate goes to save you, you don't see borrowed time, that's okay, you get downed, killer picks you up, you just DS and you... You run away. You've used the perk to save yourself. It can be good near an exit gate, okay? Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, Leatherface is camping in front of the exit gate while face camping a Jake on the hook. I can run in and maybe get the hook animation started with BT. Jake's going to run away. I'm going to get put to the ground. He's going to try and hit Jake. He does hit Jake. He might try and chase Jake out. He might try anything. Even if Jake doesn't go down, he picks me up straight away, hooks me. He's got BT on him now. And that means Deliverance is going to activate for me because he's stayed up for a period of time. Therefore, I can just wait right in front of Leatherface's face while he face camps me with a chainsaw. Kobe, try and dead hard him. I fuck it up. Doesn't matter. Or if I don't, you know, I just Kobe. He chainsaws me. I DS him and then I leave too. So it counters face campers. It counters so much if you know how to use it correctly. However, I'm relying on two perks there. I'm relying on Deliverance alongside Decisive Strike. And that means you have to be altruistic. And if you're doing that, you're going to want borrowed time to help an ally. You see, the thing is, if you are helping somebody else, you want BT. If you don't have BT, you want to run Adrenaline. Don't have Adrenaline, you want to run DS. Running Adrenaline and DS is an okay combo, don't get me wrong, but there's just a lot of things you can currently do. These are all perks that kind of do the same thing that don't actually stack on themselves as well. They're, it's really good. You can make a powerful build. It can be very frustrating for a killer to verse a four-man swift with BT, Adrenaline, DS, and Metal of Man. That's a fucking pain in the ass to try and verse as a killer. A good killer will down everyone and slug them. And I know that sounds a horrible thing to say, but if you're versing all that Metal of Man, it's going to be really hurtful, yeah? That also being said, if four people have Metal of Man and DS, and one of them actually heals up and he's glowing bright pink, down everyone else and leave him up. That way you can use him to clutch the game. There's a lot of different ways. You can use Metal of Man against survivors, but this is providing you're an M1 killer that has no kind of clutch potential. The Wraith without Horned Ground or Devour Hope or, you know, make your choice or... God forbid, no ed. You know, it just depends on a lot of different scenarios. All right, guys, that's enough for Decisive Strike. We're going to move on to the next perk, Overwhelming Presence. Now, this is currently a Doctor perk. Now, you know how you might be playing a game of Killer and you might have three people with med kits, maybe somebody with a flashlight blinding you at every pallet with a double battery length, and you know you have to hit him once for him to drop his item with Franklin's Demise. He's going to run away, you're going to lose him, and he's going to come back and pick his flashlight up. You know that kind of feeling that you'd have? Well, rest assured, this perk right here, doesn't happen. This increases consumption charge rate by 80, 90, and 100%. So that six second flashlight or that eight second flashlight is now a four second flashlight. It takes about 1.8 seconds to blind. He's going to blind you once, maybe twice. He's not going to risk trying to get a third blind with losing his amazing flashlight. He runs double ba battery add on. You've just fucking half that time all the way down. So that there is a better version of Franklin's because it's going to affect toolboxes. You know, you could still be versing a squad with uh, toolboxes, and the only killer I would be happily playing Franklin's against that would be, would either be, realistically, I could do it as Legion. I wouldn't want to. Legion's already weak enough. You kind of need all four of his perks. You could do it as a nurse, blinking through walls to make them drop their toolboxes. There's a lot of things you could do. Generally, if I see mass toolboxes, I'll just play Ruin. It's that simple. 
uh, but it just comes down to understanding. Overwhelming Presence is going to make him consume his charges twice as quick. Now, using a brown toolbox, it takes every single charge out of a brown toolbox to do a generator, even if you land your greats, right? Landing two greats equals preserving one charge on a toolbox. However, on a med kit, if you miss a skill check, and you need to land two greats to make up for the missed skill check, okay? So let's say a med kit, I think it has 16 charges. 16 charges. You land a great, it preserves one charge. Okay, therefore, you can use the entire make it and heal with one charge left. You miss a skill check, it then uses two charges from missing the skill check. Okay, so now you have 14 charges left. You can't heal, you can heal about 80% with that. Okay, that being said, if you land two greats, it'll make up for the one that you missed and it will consume the make it. You land three greats, you'll have one charge left over. It's just simple math and understanding. Um, overwhelming presence is good, don't get me wrong, especially if you know you're going to a small map like the game. If you're running this on the temple without distressing, not going to do too much. You'd probably be better off with Franklin's. It depends, man. You're not going to run Overwhelming Presence on a 16 meter Michael Meyer heartbeat. You're not going to run this on a hag with modern abuse at 16 meters or even 24 meters. You're going to run that on a 32 meter heartbeat killer, maybe with distressing, making it 40. Maybe the dock with Calm Calm Adol, making it about 50 fucking meter heartbeat. Then you're going to run it. Yeah, it makes sense with um, Unnerving Presence as well. However, that's all I really have to say. It's an okay perk. Would I recommend it? There's just better options, man. Why rely on your ability to hinder them or. You know, you're relying on a perk that's like, okay, I want them not to be able to use their toolboxes as well. Why not go, okay, he's going to use toolboxes. I'm going to run Ruin to slow that down. I'm going to run Pop Goes a Weasel. I'm also going to run Distortance in case they try and stack with toolboxes. And Barbecue and Chili with Situational Awareness on the Spirit. That way I don't have to eat pallets and I don't need Enduring or Brutal to beat through pallets. So I don't have a speed up perk in my favor. You know, it just depends on how you're going to run. And finally, we have my favorite perk in Dead by Daylight. In the PTB currently, which is not set in stone, um, Pop Goes a Weasel is getting a buff up to 60 seconds at a 25% regression. It currently says 15%. It goes 15, 20, and 25, whether it's tier 1, tier 2, or tier 3. It is my favorite, favorite perk in the entire game, right? You get a generator all the way to 99%. It takes 80 seconds to do a Jenny, so it's 79 seconds into the Jenny. There's one second left. Killer comes over and kicks it. Boop, boop, 25% regression. You know, 25% at 80, that's 20 seconds. 20 seconds off the generator. Well, it's, it's about 19.7 seconds because, you know, you got it to 99.9. You go 19 seconds off the generator just straight away. And if you still have Ruin, that's going to be a bitch. That's 19 seconds of him landing great to get it up or regression. So Pop Goes the Weasel is by far my favorite perk in the game. It rewards you for playing well, the situational awareness for rotation. It goes hand in hand with my second favorite perk in the game, which is Discordance, which is a I believe a Legion perk, believe it or not. Yeah, I know. I never thought I'd say that. The fact that you know where two people are in a generator that is such a good perk, okay? You have Jeff on the hook, you have David and Chase, and then all of a sudden, Distortance pops on the far right-hand side of the map. You know there's two people over there. You down David, and now you know exactly where you need to go to cut off the other two people. You can't see them. You wait in the center of the map or close to where they're going to come out. They get the Jenny done, he's going to hit struggle. It is that simple. They're going to have to come away. You see one person, you hit him, then you go back to the pot spot. Do you see the other one? You know, you can make so many plays. You can clutch the game like that with that combo of perks. And I run it very often on a lot of my killers. You got to be very, very careful. Um... Pop Goes a Weasel is so damn good. You've got to hook somebody. A lot of people run Pop and Barbecue. I prefer Pop and Distortance. You know, a good tracker or a good killer will be able to go, hmm, this Jenny I've checked on a little while ago. It hasn't been started. This one here, this one here. Uh, I haven't checked on this corner. I know somebody spawns in this general direction. I haven't even had any form of notification. I'm sure there's somebody down here doing a Jenny, doing a totem, doing a hook doing a chest, something like that. A good killer will be able to know the map, understand. I don't run barbecue on almost any of my killers. Killers I recommend barbecue on. I don't even recommend it on Leatherface. I recommend it on the Billy, of course. 230% movement speed, map pressure, momentum, getting through it. This spirit, so you can phase 176% movement speed. Just go straight towards your target. You don't have to use your entire phase. I recommend phasing in small doses. Just depends on how far away you are. If you want to get the pop regression, if you want to get the make a choice hit, a lot of different things come into effect. And then obviously the nurse, you know, 20 meter blink, two second charge. You can run pinecone grass, 32 meter blink. You know, you got massive gap closing uh, pressure and potential. They are the only killers I recommend barbecue on. I might run it on the wraith now and then. I might run it on, you know, the trapper now and then for blood points, but I don't recommend it on them. So it just shows you a lot of people like barbecue best perk in the game my top five favorite perks for killer is pop goes a weasel distortance make your choice enduring and then barbecue that order right there i generally run at least one or two of those perks on all my killers even if they're running different builds i do like corrupt intervention as well i mean infectious fright is one of my favorite perks too on the nurse but then again very situational 
on the nurse as opposed to I ran it on Freddy Krueger 2, therefore, you know, you know when to slug someone with knockout, you know when to change targets to keep the immobil immobilizing pressure out, but then with Freddy's rework, you're not going to need to play like that anymore too. Um, that being said, guys, that's going to be all for the shrine today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come and uh, check out the live stream where I've got all these beautiful people waiting for me. So, um, all right, we'll see you soon.